team keep it clean all the rumors were true because when it was announced yesterday that the ravens were having a presser today um a lot of people figured it was going to be sam cook retiring i thought he either sam cook retiring or jimmy smith retiring um but I, I don't think this came as a shocker to anybody now it was uh it was widely known amongst Pretty much everybody. I mean, we all figured what was going to go down. Uh, when the Ravens drafted Jordan Stout in the fourth round. When they took a punt in the fourth round, it was like, okay, these boys ain't about to cut no fourth round pick. Now, if it was a fifth round pick, they might cut that. Because you know what they would. Fourth round pick, no. They pretty safe. Um, so when they took took him, it was like, uh-oh, well, we know that Sam Cook is going to be on the way up out of here. Uh, but... It's nice that Sam Cook gets to go out on his own terms. And I wonder, because um, I didn't watch the presser. I, I didn't get a chance to watch the presser yet. Um, so I'm not sure if he said that this was something that he had been thinking about for a while. And he let the Ravens know. I'm sure he probably let them know ahead of time so they could draft accordingly. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't just leave them in the dark like, oh, okay, I'm retiring now. Y'all good luck finding a punter. But no, nah, I'm sure he ain't do that. But one thing. Shout out to Sam Cook because uh, they did say that he is retiring from the game, but he's still going to be around the game because he's going to be a special teams consultant. So Sam Cook was like, he, he ain't hit Jordan with that Ryan Tannehill. Like, it ain't my job to train. He ain't worried about you, man. I'm worried about me. Nah, Sam Cook was, he, he, he's sticking around and he's going to work with, uh, with Jordan Stout and whatnot to help him come along in the NFL. And it's... I think it's very important, and it it should help make the transition that much uh, smoother, because before uh, it was the long snapper, you know the Wolfpack, since they they losing another guy. Uh, first it was Morgan Cox, uh, who was the long snapper. He would snap the ball to Sam Cook, who was the holder, and then Justin Tucker would kick it. And, and they did that so many times through so many different situations, uh, and they had that chemistry. Um, but now they they lost one. They lost one a couple years ago with Morgan Cox. They cut him. And they decided, you know what, we're going to roll with the young boy, Nick Moore, uh, at long snap. And he's been doing his thing. There hasn't been any hiccups or anything like that. Everything's been A-OK. -okay. Maybe he should have taught some of the sinners how to snap the ball. Anyway, so now they lose another member of the Wolfpack in Sam Cook. So now they lose the holder. So Jordan, that, that's going to be his job. But what better person to teach him how to do the job of a holder for those kicks? And Sam Cook himself. Like, what, what better person? Like, he's been doing this for, like, literally forever. Like, he, I, I saw something that said he, he was teammates, even with Jonathan Ogden. Like, what? This dude was teammates with Jonathan Ogden. And, and, and you know, Jonathan Ogden, Hall of Fame, left tackle. And he, uh, you know, for the Hall of Fame, in order to get to the Hall of Fame, you have to be retired for at least five years, and then you're eligible for the Hall of Fame. So Sam Cooke not only played with Jonathan Ogden, he saw Jonathan Ogden retire. The five years passed for Jonathan Ogden to retire. Jonathan Ogden entered the Hall of Fame, and Sam Cooke was still playing way after that, too. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Sam Cooke has been around literally for forever. Forever. Forever, ever. Forever, ever. Um, and, and like a few people have pointed out, yeah, he is the Ravens' most accurate passer in history. More accurate than Lamar Jackson, more accurate than Joe Flacco, more accurate than Kyle Bowler. I know that probably wouldn't be too hard, but shout out to Sam Cook, man. Um, but yeah, now they enter a new era of punting with Jordan. No pressure, no pressure, but there is some pressure. Um, because you will be relied upon to pin pin the ball deep, hopefully get it inside the 20. Um, maybe he could unlock some of them. You know how Madden did the little, the little challenges during your, uh, your franchise mode and you punt it inside the 20. I got my first one like the other day when I was playing my franchise mode, and I didn't even know those existed until a couple of days ago. Been playing franchise mode for years and been playing franchise mode all this year, but just found out that when you kick it inside the 20, you get the little, uh, the little upgrade or whatever. And I was like, wow, I... I guess I don't be kicking inside the toilet. Well, I don't be punting a lot either. Anyway, um, so this is uh, this is not even necessarily good news. Just it's it's a transition. It's a transition, and this is the second person and the second key special teamer that is making the transition from playing to helping with coaching. 
course, Anthony Levine was the other one. He was a key special team, a special team captain, by the way. And he's still going to be around helping with uh, scouting, I believe. Um, so that, that that's really cool. I, I love seeing players get opportunities after football. And I love seeing them get different opportunities because, and it's one thing if these players go and they like, oh, you know what, I'm going to be a coach for a high school team, a little league or whatnot. And that's cool. Those are, those are great positions because you are, uh, you are teaching a lot of the youth through football. Uh, you're teaching them a lot of lessons through football. Um, and, and they, I think with that, a lot of them, may, they may not get the lessons until, they may not understand the lessons fully until later on down in life. Uh, but anyway, for Anthony Levine and Sam Cook, it's, it's cool to see them go from players to on staff because for them to be on the staff, they and we it's guys like Jamel McClain, of course, Zachary Orr, um, Anthony Weaver is another one. It's, it's been different. Plenty of guys that have done it. But I would love to see more, not only just on the Ravens, but in the league, period, um, to where because this gives them an opportunity to continue to grow. Uh, and this gives them an opportunity to one day they may be coaching against John Harbaugh as a head coach. You, you just never know how this thing could work out. But the fact that the Ravens give them the opportunity to make that transition. Good stuff, Baltimore. We love it. We love it. Love it. Um, so, yeah, special teams, uh, they, they, they took a blow, but. I'm sure uh, they'll recover because that's one thing that the Ravens do a great job at is recovering on special teams. Um, when they, mm, the whole kicker situation, remember the kickers before Justin Tucker. But again, I know everybody remembers Billy Cundiff for the bad, but Billy Cundiff was not always bad. He just had very, very bad moments in that last year. The year before, and even some during that year, he had some really good moments, good kicks and whatnot. But that year, everything, and I think the Ravens even gave, gave him a contract extension, I believe. But that year, just everything fell apart. In the following year, undrafted rookie free agent kicker Justin Tucker from Texas. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, we'll get this guy a shot, see what these guys do. Booting kicks from like 90 yards. They weren't that far, but he, he had that leg. And the thing with Justin Tucker, he showed them like, all right, I got the power, I got the accuracy, but he also had the clutch too. And that's something that he had already, but it's something, it's one thing to have it in, in college, but to have it in a pros, that's a whole nother ball game. So that is a, a commendation to Justin Tucker himself and his preparation, but it's also a commendation, a commendation to uh, coaching staff as well with special teams. To be able to bring him along and this, again, a undrafted rookie free agent. Undrafted. Nobody picked this guy. And he is a kicker, so it's harder for kickers to get picked. But nobody picked this guy. Remember Robert Aguayu? I think that was his name. Who got picked in like the second round by the Bucks? I think it was by the Bucks. Remember him? I don't know where he at now. But anyway, um, Janikowski. I think Janikowski, was, what was he, a first or second round pick? I think he might have been your first. I forget. But anyway, kickers don't really get picked, get picked like that. I know the, the Bengals, they picked McPherson in the fifth round. And I know Browns, they picked the kicker this year. I want to say it was in the fifth round too. But either way, Justin Tucker ain't get picked. And now Justin Tucker the best kicker in the league. So Ravens, they, they did, did something right there with the special teams. Did something right. So, um... With uh, with Stout, uh, I'm sure, and again with Sam Cook being there, even if, if Sam Cook wasn't there, I wouldn't be worried about Jordan Stout. But with Sam Cook being there, I definitely ain't worried about Jordan Stout. He will be just fine. He will be a okay. So beautiful thing, uh, great thing. Um, one last thing, I haven't seen it from any. I haven't seen anything official because, uh, and I just. We're not going to talk about it right now, but there's been the rumor floating around that the Ravens are interested in T.Y. Hilton. Um, and one of the, the things they quoted the athletic, they said, oh, it's in, this, it's in this article in the athletic. So I read the article and it did not mention the Ravens being interested in T.Y. Hilton not one time. So that's why we ain't talk about that yet. But if we see something from somebody and it definitely says Ravens are interested in T.Y. Hilton, it did say. Colts and some other teams are interested in T.Y. Hilton, but it did not name the Ravens specifically. The only time that I saw it named the Ravens specifically in that article from The Athletic was um, where it talked about last year. 
when the Ravens offered the money until I was like, oh, I almost went to the Ravens, but then I turned it down because Jim Irsay and the coach, they came through with this last minute push and I came back home. Then he got hurt again. Oh, but anyway, team keep it clean. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, man, just like Sam Cook is when it comes to being a member of the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, one last thing. I was about to say I'm out, but I ain't out yet. I know there's been a lot of people who watched the video of Eric DaCosta. And they've been like, oh, because uh, I know my boy Marcus, he hit me up. Uh, another one of my guys hit me up about it, too. Oh, I forgot who it was. My apologies to you. You know I love you. But a couple people hit me up. They said, oh, hey, hey, did you did you see Eric DaCosta? You saw Eric DaCosta's hoodie. Y'all, you saw it. You saw, you saw him with the, uh, with the Lamar Jackson hoodie on. Ho, ho, Lamar locked in, baby. Let's get it. And me, I'm like, ah, uh, that was nice. It was cool. Nice gesture. Shout out to Eric DaCosta wearing Lamar Jackson's hoodie, his apparel and whatnot. But nothing's official till it's official. So I, yeah, <laughs> we'll see how things go with Lamar Jackson in that contract. I still ain't expecting anything to be done this year. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. So Eric DaCosta, you keep on wearing that Lamar Jackson apparel. I actually got to get me one. So, Eric, Eric, Thank you, EDC, for motivating me, motivating me to get a Lamar Jackson, one of them little wild dog hoodies, man. So I appreciate it. Uh, shout out to y'all. Shout out to you, team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for supporting. And just like Sam Cooke is now, we out.